So let us upload our new mug to Second Life. Let us also import the texture. Okay, apparently the Second Life importer does not display the texture. Actually there is a little confusion about when exactly Blender recognizes that the image is a texture for the mug. Currently Blender simply ignores the image during export. I will explain in the next chapter what you have to do to eventually see the texture here. For now let's go ahead and first import the object, and then get the texture as an independent image upload. Take care that the correct name is displayed in the model name field. Unfortunately the name field is only updated if you first clean it up, then clear the settings. When all is set up, then press calculate weights and fee. And finally upload the mesh. Now upload the texture separately. Raise the mesh on ground. And then drag the texture and drop it on the mesh. So this worked so far. Fine. We can become curious and add a bit of fun. For example we can add a bit of shininess to the mug. And add bumpiness, select darkness from the available options. That will give some extra accent to the look. So we are done by now? No, not really. Believe me we have just started. You may have seen it already while playing with your mug. But let me show you here what happens when you slowly move away from the object. At a certain distance you see that the look degrades a bit. Further away it degrades a bit more. Then eventually it gets really ugly. What you see here is called, level of detail, or LOD. The idea behind this is that objects need less detail when shown from a larger distance, thus far away objects will call for less computer resources than nearby objects. Second Life provides four levels of detail, and the distances where the LOD transitions take place are dependent of the object size. In general the transitions happen much sooner for small objects than for large objects. And all of that makes a lot of sense. But there is a price to pay. Someone has to define the LOD shapes. Until now we have not taken care about this. But now it is time to get back to the second life importer and take a closer look at it. The four levels of detail are named, high, medium, low, and lowest. Only the highest LOD is imported from file by default. And also by default all subsequent levels of detail are automatically generated. We can make the different levels of detail visible in the previewer. And here we can also see that the auto-generated shapes of our model are not very appealing. So we have two options here. First we can tell the importer that it should inherit the LOD from one level above. This means in practice, that you will not see any LOD transition between the level and the next higher level. If you want it, then you even can tell the importer to reuse the shape of the highest LOD for all subsequent levels. This would fully disable LOD for your object. But this has a price. Let us take this road for a moment. Now calculate the weights and fee. Let us now take a closer look at the calculated numbers. The upload fee is simple. That's what you have to pay when you want to upload the model. The land impact is how many prims will be taken from your prim budget, when you raise this object on ground. The download is a measurement for the actual amount of data that has to be transferred from the server towards the viewer. I will ignore the remaining numbers, physics and server and get back to them in the next chapter.
you only must know and remember that the maximum of the three numbers, download, physics, and server, is taken as the value for land impact. We see clearly that currently the download value of 16 lets raise the land impact for our small cup high up in the air. So this is what we have to pay when we try to ignore the LOD system. But we have another option left over. We can create our own LOD shapes. We only have to take care that each subsequent LOD has not more triangles and vertices, than the next higher level. When we make our own shapes, then we also have the opportunity to optimize our model. And we can usually find much better solutions compared to the automatic generation of LOD. One caveat of this approach is however, that you must provide one Kalata file per LOD. This will need some more organization on your side, so that you can keep control over what is located where. Now this was again a lot of theory, and we will have to get back to Blender and see how we will actually create our shapes, and which new pitfalls we find along the way.